The Cayman by Maria Eugenia Manrique, illustrated by Ramon Perez, translated by Amy Brill. This story happened many years ago in San Fernando de Apure, a tiny city on the bank of a wide river that was home to many alligators. Their skins were highly prized by hunters who sometimes left young orphaned alligators behind. One day during a game of hide and seek, a little girl named Julia found one of these baby alligators, a river caiman, wandering around the riverbank. The discovery caused a commotion and the children passed the tiny reptile around. But when it was time to go home, None of them was brave enough to take the baby along. Julia was about to put it back in the river when Paoro, the town jeweler and watchmaker who lived on 24th of July Street, approached. Paoro picked up the baby alligator, which was no bigger than the palm of his hand, stroked her gently, and without another thought, slid her into the front pocket of his shirt. Don't worry, he told the children. I'm going to bring her home and take care of her. You can come and play with her whenever you like. When he got home, Paolo peeked inside his pocket. The creature slept peacefully, curled up like a clock spring. Because her skin was very dark, Paolo decided to name her Night. Paolo took Knight to his workshop with him each day. News of the young clockmaker who had adopted a baby alligator traveled quickly, and visitors began arriving at the workshop from all the nearby villages and towns. They brought cracked clocks, broken necklaces, bracelets for engraving, and rings for resizing. They stood in line in the street and waited their turn to see and touch the little alligator. So Knight got used to people, especially Faoro. She followed him everywhere. Each morning, Knight climbed into Faoro's bed to wake him up by resting her head on his lap. Faoro said good morning with a gentle pat on the caiman's head. River caimans need fresh water to live, so Faoro built a pond with a slope in the backyard for Night to come and go as she pleased. The caiman liked her pond. She laid hundreds of tiny eggs in the water and played with the neighborhood children, who visited often. The alligator was more than six feet long when Faoro told her he was in love with his neighbor, Angela whom he had met at the town fair. He wanted to marry her, but had to be sure that Angela and Knight would get along. At their first meeting, Knight wrapped herself around Faoro's legs and stared at Angela. Angela was terrified, but Faoro took her hand between his own and together they stroked the alligator's head. Night closed her eyes as if she were smiling. They set a date for the wedding. Faoro made the wedding rings and a small surprise for Night. Gold settings for her fangs. The alligator showed them off to the delight of all the guests. From the moment Angela arrived, life was joyful. Angela sang and laughed. She served delicious cakes and cookies and fresh juice to all the children who came to play with the alligator. Years passed. Night grew until she was ten feet long. Ten feet of a quiet and happy life. One hot summer afternoon, Faoro got sick. Angela stopped singing. The house was full of sadness. Night would not leave Faoro's side. When it was time to say goodbye, 
the alligator laid her head on Faoro's lap. His touch was reassuring. Nay, I have to go, but don't be afraid, he whispered. Everything will be all right. Be a friend to Angela. She loves you and will always take care of you. A great desolation settled upon the house. Even the parrots and parakeets fell quiet. The caiman slowly crossed the silent backyard. She went into a small storage room full of old things, and there she stayed, not leaving, not eating. In her grief, Angela worried about night, but could not find a way to make her come out or eat anything. Days, then weeks, went by. One morning, Angela was sorting papers and found a card Faoro had written many years earlier. It said, Dear Angela, Your beautiful voice fills my heart with joy. Whenever you sing, I feel you close. Thinking of him, Angela began to sing. Night's head appeared. Step by step, she emerged and stood in the backyard, listening. Her great jaws open, gathering light and warmth from the sun. From that day on, the children returned to play with the caiman, and Angela never stopped singing. The End I hope you enjoyed this story. Don't forget to click subscribe so you can hear more stories later. If you'd like to get a copy of this book for yourself, ask a grown-up to help you. Check the links in the description below.